Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're hailing from. Welcome to another episode of the Level Up Hour on OpenShift.tv. I am Chris Short, Principal Technical Marketing Manager on the OpenShift team at Red Hat. I am joined today by the one and only Langdon White, who is my teammate uh, on our technical marketing team. Langdon, please introduce yourself. Take it away. Let the audience know what we're learning today. Uh, so as you said, I'm Langdon White, and I introduced myself a lot last time, so I won't do it as much this time. Uh, but I uh, spent some time as a developer advocate for RHEL. I spent some time in engineering for RHEL, um, and now I work as well on the TMM team. Um, and it can be mildly distracting when we have a slight delay between uh, the our real world and the Twitch world. But, you know, hey. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> don't get me started. But anyway, Internet gremlins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Internet gremlins. Uh, no, uh, it, but, yeah, all the all the feeding of feeds out to the internet. Yep. Uh, right, there's right. a delay. No, there's no getting around it. <laughs> so this is the Level Up Hour, and we're talking about the Level Up program a little bit, but mostly what we want to talk about is like why containers are interesting for RHEL admins um, and why you might want to be interested in uh, checking them out and why they might be useful to you. And uh, in kind of a related way, uh, we are offering some cool uh, discounts and that kind of stuff around um, becoming uh, OpenShift admins. So kind of once you're hooked on containers, uh, you will quickly discover that orchestration is something that you uh, both want and need. Um, and they it becomes super painfully obvious very, very quickly. And OpenShift, our kind of interpretation of, uh, of Kubernetes, uh, is a, a way to get that orchestration. It makes your life easier. But in the near term, we're mostly talking about containers and why they're useful. Um, and today we're going to talk about uh, trying to get all those nasty helper scripts that you have written uh, over the years and trying to get them into containers so that you can easily use them around your data center. So we talked last time a little bit about how to use uh, just kind of single applications. Um, and uh, this time it's more about your custom, you know, kind of junk that, you, uh, that you've uh, built over the years and want to share or you want to use uh, kind of around your data center. So with that, maybe we should get started. Yeah, let's. I am. Right. Uh, I'm actually somehow logged into a Nano on a very, the box I just pulled on. <laughs> uh, I just sent. I just sent Langdon a helper script, and I'm logged into Nano, and I don't know how to get out of it. Right. Right. <laughs> See, that, this is. Uh, it's actually very funny. Uh, I think Fedora 33, so the next version of Fedora, is going to default to Nano. Uh, for the editor to solve the I'm trapped in VI, how do I get out problem? <laughs> um, because at least <laughs> Nano, while well, at least for me, it does still, say Control X or right. Whatever. It says yeah. it right on the screen what to do, right? Right. Even though I find it kind of counterintuitive. Um, even though I was yes. a big Nano user back in the days of Pine, um, because ah, that was the which makes sense editor yeah. for Pine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Pine, I still cracks me up. I love uh, recursive acronyms. Uh, so Pine is not Elm, is what Pine stands for. Mm -hmm. um, so if you if you really want throwback, you can go check out Elm. But uh, yeah, I don't yeah, recommend I'm it. Good. If you really want a text uh, based one, go check out uh, Mutt. Um, it's yeah, your email. that's a good one. So, but much like uh, much like the eye, it's not very intuitive about its keys. Mm -hmm. So you know. Uh, all right, so season one, episode two. So uh, as you may or may not know, we have a cool GitHub repo. Um, and so everything from the uh, show and uh, everything else I kind of create, I'm kind of throwing in there. Um, so obviously this is the, apparently I didn't push. Um, so uh, yeah, but even <laughs> so I didn't I actually, I didn't want to give it away before before the show. So I think I was kind of on the fence. Um, but uh, so I have, I've been kind of creating, uh, you know, the episode and then kind of whatever content we create. We had somebody last time ask me about um, this prep machine thing that I kind of showed really quickly. Uh, so I threw that in there. Um, I strongly, I, I would like to very much point out uh, this not maintained uh, uh, component here, because uh, this is just a janky script I wrote to uh, to be able to use vert builder and vert install, primarily because I find the command line options like super long and difficult. Yes, so uh, they are very long. Yeah, uh, once I figured them out. So 
if you want to check that out, I threw it in the episode. Uh, we also, during the episode, talked about how could we do net stat, net stat on UBI. Uh, so I did that uh, during the episode. I figured that out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I learned another cool thing uh, while we were uh, basically between the last meeting or the last uh, show and this one. Um, and I filed a bug. So well, in did. Podman, I said, hey, what if we used OCI file in addition to Docker Fox? If you remember from last time, I said, oh, hey, yeah. it would be nice if it would default yeah. to this. To which the reply I got was, oh, it's already working. It's just a different file name. So I changed the names to container file. Um, oh, okay. And now it just works. Uh, so, hmm. oh, look, there's more comments here than when I saw it last time. Can you guys read that? I don't know how big that uh, is. Yeah, blow that up. I can't oh, okay. see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I wrote a nice little comment. And then uh, Michael Heon? essentially uh, i Maybe. know it's m but i can't mm -hmm. think of his first name um so uh yeah they closed my bug because oh yeah by the way it's already it wasn't gone. a bug yeah yeah and um but if you notice actually just for there's a couple of things here i wanted to kind of point out about this first of all if you have a question about any open source software go file a, a bug you know go file yeah. a, an open issue. an issue and yeah. then one of the things that is a red hatism in my experience, um, you know, or but the red hat ecosystem is pretty large in the open source world, is to use this RFE flag, which is request for enhancement. Um, and so if you mm -hmm. throw this into the title, you can make it a lot clearer that this is, even though it's down here, there's this kind feature thing, um, it will kind of indicate to the readers that it's not actually a bug, it's a request, right? right. Um, so that makes me feel better about filing an issue um, when I don't really have a bug. But mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, I got a good, um, yeah, so I was just, because these two You got a healthy response. You got a good yeah. response. Apparently, there was some discussion amongst the team. Yeah. And Container yeah, File won out the day, which well, is interesting. Funny. If you read this, right, I definitely read a, boy, there was a long, long <laughs> email yes. thread about this. <laughs> there, was a, there was a lot of discussion about right, that. Yeah. Right. Um, so... <laughs> Excuse me. So as part of my updates uh, since last week, I changed all the file names to be container files. So now you can just um, podman build, um, you know, and then some tag name and then, the, you know, dot and a container file will work. So hopefully I did it correctly this time and we will be able to do that as well. Um, so why don't we get started? Um, Rain Leander says hi. Hello, Rain. How are hi, you? Rain. Also, Walid is in the house. The one and only Walid Cherie, everybody. Hello. Welcome hello. Walid. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome all. Um, yeah, Rain's like, you know, cool and all, too. I mean, I don't know. Like, this better be a good show. Ugh. <laughs> well, uh, I just I just realized I had to uh, the script I sent you. I had some tokens in it, so I had to take them out. Uh, luckily, I sent them in Slack so I could actually edit it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> 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 All right, so one of the things that I was, uh, one of the things we've been playing with a lot lately, shockingly enough, as we're on a Twitch stream, mm -hmm. um, is doing video recording. Uh, and so I've been doing that with, uh, or sorry, video editing, which I've been right. doing with Blender, recording we've been doing with OBS. Um, but for the editing, I've been using Blender. Um, and I have, you know, my laptop, which is fine. But to do a render, something I don't really want to do uh, locally, um, if I can avoid it, because I can do it headless, um, and I can do it on a machine that's got more juice, uh, and I can keep, you know, reading my email uh, oh, while I'm waiting. I need this. I need <laughs> yes. this in my life. Yeah, exactly. I can't wait for this episode. Okay. So <laughs> what I did was um, I wrote a basically because again, bunch of flags, and so I didn't want to have to remember what the different um, uh, flags were to the Blender. Well, the render fact you called it engine. Blender Render. <laughs> right. Right. It's such a part. great name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm very good about, uh, doing a usage, uh, component at the beginning oh, of my scripts. You. I'm terrible about that. I forget otherwise. So yeah. Um, and then the only thing is like, I find the blender rendering, uh, stuff to be not very, like the data for it isn't great, but the point is I can never remember the, I couldn't remember the flags. So I wanted to be able to, uh, bundle that up into a shell script. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to put it, that shell script inside a container so that we can just move that container around. Nice. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, um, but let's uh, give it a look. So 
uh, we're going to do this all together so that we can learn how to do it. I did cheat a little bit, so I do know it will work eventually. Um, but today we are focused on um, UBI, uh, you know, as the base. Um, if you're not familiar with this, UBI is uh, the container um, base image that Red Hat produces that is based on RHEL bits, uh, RHEL 8 specifically in this case. There's also a UBI 7. Uh, there's also a minimal, which is even smaller. Um, in this use case, I didn't care about how small it was really. Uh, Blender is going to be a good chunk of something like 127 megs anyway. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, a couple best practices I want to point out. So, uh, but we'll try it the other way too, just to to check it out. Um, but usually when I want something that is going to be in a container, I will download it first and stick it in the, the same directory so that I know what version I'm getting. And we talked about this last time, um, mm -hmm. but it's still a good consistent thing to get, you know, to get to do, right? One thing to also note, this is also a sticky point for a lot of people who are doing containers, I think, is the difference between the add keyword and the copy keyword. Um, add has the nice feature of this uh, can be a URL or it can be a tarball um, and it will just expand the tarball into uh, the uh, target basically. Um, and if you notice, it's even an, a, a, a compressed tarball. So, uh, it's, so some magic happens there, but that's why I use add here versus copy. Um, in the next line, I could actually use copy just fine, but I try to be relatively consistent, right? So, yeah. So, Alita is asking, could you use Fedora or CentOS in replacement of UBI? In general, oh, yeah. the answer is yes. You know, right? Yeah. Like UBI is going to be the more, uh, you know, downstream or wait, yeah, the most downstream version, right? Like same with CentOS kind of thing. So, you could totally right. switch those out. And Fedora is going to be upstream of rel so it'll have more fun stuff right like right and and potentially for blender it might actually be better who knows i don't know um, right so i was actually slightly worried about that when i was building this that i might need to use fedora to have like late enough libraries um did not find that to be the case and one thing i will point out this is the blender blender finally did an lts release mm. um so long-term support release so this 2.83 okay. Um, you know, the, the Y, not the Z, but the Y is mm -hmm. supposedly going to be around for some period of time. I didn't actually look up how long LTS was, but LTS is typically a couple of three years. Um, so this binary should be kind of good to go for a while. And it does work with RHEL 8. So I figured, you know, it'll be that much more stable, that much cleaner, right. et cetera. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, like I would throw this at a RHEL VM anyway. Right, like what you right, have to do. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, so, in fact, what I run it on is a it, well. Actually, it's a rel uh, bare metal install. Yeah. Know? Well, um, yeah. It's a. At this point, it would be a rel bare metal thing. But yeah, it's in my in a quote data center. It would be a rel VM in my house. Yeah, it would be bare metal. Yeah. Right. right, right. <laughs> I don't um, run a real data center here, though. Right. Well, I do. Oh, run it's starting VMs to look like it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, all right. So. What we're going to do is we are uh, apparently we're going to turn up my headphone volume. Um, you did that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're going to do here is we are going to try and build it. And so we're just going to say podman build T um, and let's call it Blender, Blender Render. I love it. And then so great. because the whole container file thing that I talked about a minute ago, I can just put period bang done. Right. Yep. So that is going to take some time uh, it's going to download the blender file and... well yeah and ubi8 luckily i got it all right actually it's not going to download it what it's doing is it's pulling it local oh that's right uh, okay. and just expanding it Expanding. um i was thinking we could try that in a few minutes um you know depending on how far we get um interesting boop, 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 boop. and xz is like ultra compression right like yeah i love xz yeah. right like it is like the most compression you can get, but it's like right. super hard to find on any other distros other than like Linux distros. Right, like right. Any other OS, it's like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> well, and I think it's actually, I mean, I think it's like fully open source and not patent encumbered and all that jazz, unlike like Zip, right? Um, Zip has a bunch of challenges. Um, so, uh, you know, it's better to use something like XZ. Um, I know 
well, like where I see it most prevalently used is on binary. So I think it's particularly good on binaries of, you know, like binary images, tarballs, et cetera. Uh, so it's, uh, I think it's most optimized for that too. All right. So if you notice, right, in my uh, container file, I didn't know what to actually install, what, what it was going to need. So we are going to try to figure it out. So uh, let's do an RM or RM even. And then we're going to change the entry point because if you notice, I had an entry point down there. And if I don't pass the entry point flag, it will try to run the shell script directly. Although we could do that first. Let's try that first just for fun. Um, oops, render. And then I just have a blend file here. I don't even know what it produces because it um, is, I don't have the video files that go with it, uh, but you'll see it work anyway. Hmm. All right, so we got a nice error. So it looks for, it's looking for libx11. Um, so what we can do is we can add that. Um, but if you notice, I'm going to do it here and we're going to say run yum install minus y lib x11. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can take advantage of the build cache, right? Instead right. of throwing it up here, which will invalidate this part. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we just build it again and then those parts should take, go pretty quick. Um, and then so oh, just real quick, uh Walid also mentioned like several vendors refuse to use UBI as they say it restricts them license wise or something. Like, can we elaborate really? on that? Yeah, like I I thought UBI was completely like license unencumbered or something. Um, well, I mean it's 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 license unencumbered in the same way kind of rel is in the sense that there I think there's still copyright locks. Um, but other than that, it's not it, but basically that just allows us to make sure that uh, what we say is UBI is UBI. Um, but other than that, it should be pretty I mean the whole point of it is for the redistribution of like partner software. Mm -hmm. So you want to build a you know a MySQL, um, you know, uh, operator or whatever. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah. Um, that's what it's for. So I'd be really surprised if that was the case. Um, yeah. Well, so if, like you can, know, if, yeah. if you got vendors that you want to link me up with, Waleed, we can talk to them. Right. Like we, we can right. like squash can whatever show. FUD is out there. We can do a whole show on the licensing for it. If we have to, you know, like we can, we can figure out something. Yeah. Oh, something like you have to agree to a Red Hat partnership or something. Uh, oh, that well, maybe could well, be true. that could be like if you're trying to get into the partner ecosystems and stuff, right? right. Like that's like a whole but I think, world all on its own. Right. Yeah. Just to use UBI and redistribute it yourself, I'd be really surprised if you have to join the partnership. You don't have to do anything for that. Yeah. No. If you yeah. want to put it in the container, uh, whatever we call it, the container uh repository uh, repository like, catalog container catalog, catalog and yeah. uh operator hub you know if you're building an operator for OpenShift or something yeah then you would right. need to be like in the partner program and all that fun stuff right and that's i think that's purely to kind of be able to uh, make sure the updates are happening and that kind of stuff exactly um, we don't want you to fire and forget um like some things somebody ends up running in production <laughs> right right <laughs> um so I run this again and notice that I get another error. Um, so what I was going to do is this hmm. is not terribly bad, but it's kind of inefficient. So what I will often do instead is actually jump into the container. Okay. Um, assuming I can type um, and kind of run it there. So if I go to, because I put it in the slash opt, um, I can now just run it here and, oops, um, oh, actually, I forgot a step. Okay, so the problem is, is that inside the container, I don't have a blend file, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what I can do is I can cheat a little bit. Um, oh, you're going to copy pasta. Because I can just, yeah. yeah. I could also do this with a volume mount, which we'll do in a minute, um, but I figure we'll do it this way for now. So we can just make up a name here because if Blender doesn't start, it can't fail to find the file, right? 
So, okay, so it's still looking for libx xi, sorry. Um, so we're gonna do sudo yum install, oh, no sudo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, uh, you're you're in the container. <laughs> I don't even think sudo's installed, but it's like no, my probably finger not. Might no. Sudo, no matter what. All right, so that gets installed, and then we do the same thing again. Oh, look, another one. Uh, oh my gosh! And look, there's some package group you can install. Well, we're gonna onesie twosie this. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think if if memory serves, I think we only need three or four. Um, okay. So we are going to do lib x fixes. fixes. Why don't fixes. they just put those in the main binary, right? Right. Like, <laughs> why is that? <laughs> well, oh, maybe some stuff works without the fixes and the fixes break things. Who knows? <laughs> right. right, uh, right. God. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways. All right. Oh, one more. Uh, Let's see. Oh, one more. I'm going okay. well, to hold maybe, you to maybe, this. Maybe one five more. more. Let's see. <laughs> Welcome Cross to the fingers. install show. Oh, look at that. All right. All right. So now we do history because now you got to remember what you did. So history. Right. You got to go back to actually install all the right things. And exactly. Make the container good. And then cool. So we're just going to grab that. Dump out of there. Now we'll dump it in here. Not with that. Hmm. Wrong, wrong copy wrong paste buffer. Buffer. Um, right. And then I need to clean this up. Yes. So, and my my VI skills are not awesome. So, oh, it like takes me no, bit. I don't. I don't expect you to have awesome VI skills on this show. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I couldn't get out of Nano earlier. <laughs> uh oh, oh, you did. -deed. Oh no. <laughs> ah technology for the win um oh god all right so what we'll do here is we are just gonna run that make sure it works um last words i'll ever say probably <laughs> exactly this will probably work yeah it should be should be fine no, it's like uh you ever heard about the first uh actual nuclear accident to ever occur uh i don't think so it's actually what instated the TPI thing, the two-person integrity rule, uh, when it came okay. to all like fizzle material. It's because somebody went back to the lab one day after going to the bar and was like, I've got this awesome idea. And they ended up actually causing like this miniature nuclear reaction on accident and like, <laughs> poisoned himself to death. Right, like right Great. there in his lab. Uh, yeah, so that's why there is now like, all these rules and everything right like this happened back in the 40s uh now there's all these rules around everything it's pretty interesting that is interesting um all right so we had a good build so that seems fine so now we can pass it a proper blend file um oh but it actually can't find it right and so here's the challenge with doing stuff like this in a container so um as i think i mentioned last time there is this concept of a volume um but a volume is really just a suggestion so I can do the nice thing and type volume in here and let's just call it files or even files. Um, but one of the things I find really annoying actually is uh, you have to create the directory. Um, so it's like, why doesn't it just, you know, make it on the fly, but I don't know. Linux oh, well, yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to rebuild that so that I now have the directory there. The volume part is really just kind of a suggestion, mm -hmm. um, but it's a little annoying. So what I need to do, though, is I have to say, OK, let's volume mount uh, where we are to slash files. And then for SE Linux labeling, I'm going to use this little Z. And if I don't do that as non root, I won't actually be able to see the files inside the container. Um, so this is an SE Linux, Linux thing. Yes. So um, what what is this actually doing, like SE manage wise? Is so doing... as I recall, um, I'd have to look at the details, but as I recall, yeah, I know. it relabels it as um, a container as container files. Okay. Um, so if you do ls dash lz, um, it's going to okay. switch these user home. I believe what it does is it switches these user home to container. Um, okay. 
guys. Uh, Makes let's sense. See, we can, we can check on that in just a second. Exactly. Yeah. But the weird part is we now have to put the path in front of it, right? So we have to put oh, yeah. But it's the path inside the container because, you know, confusing. Containers. It's exactly. Called, like, oh. if you thought virtualization was confusing, well, it's just another layer in, basically. That's what containers is. Did you put oh, the wrong file name? No, I have a in the shell script. I actually um, assume the dot blend, which oh, is probably a mistake. You did put that in the usage too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I can even find out that it will see. Assume <laughs> to that. add dot blend. Okay. So cool. if we, you know, we should probably fix the shell script so that it doesn't do that. We'll just pass the whole file name, but whatever. Um, and there we go. Now we're doing a blend. Um, Holy smokes! Cool. And that's awesome. Theoretically, why is it? Oh, because it's putting it. Yeah. It renders it out because you mounted it. Right, but it shouldn't be in a directory called files, should it? That's no. Weird. It should be wherever you mounted it from. Right, you would think. But so, if you notice, if you Isn't do it right, else, that, LZ, that's the MP4 file right there, right? No, but no? it's in the files directory. That's oh. the thing. I don't really know why. Did. Mm. See? Okay. Interesting. All right. It might be, uh, maybe I did something janky in my shell script, which is certainly possible. Um, yeah. So I'm no, not 100%. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Nah. I, uh, uh, we'll just, we'll nah. just chalk it up to whatever. <laughs> hey, right here, though. That's what matters. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, as promised, it relabeled as container file T so that uh, you can see the files inside the container. Beautiful. Yeah. And that's uh, that's, and that's actually good for me to know because I didn't know you could just pass that on build. That's nice. Uh, oh, on run, on run, on run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, no worries. Um, and uh, yeah, and what I like is that it keeps the ownership right, uh, mm -hmm. which is also yeah. nice. I think it's a little bit convenient because my user is one thousand, and the default user will be one thousand. So I think it's a little bit of its convenience, um, but it does not get relabeled as root, which is nice. Cool. Um, so there is the awesome Blender render thing. Um, I'm not Blender sure. Blender render. Exactly. Is it worth showing, pulling it from a URL? It'll take a while because it has to download it and then um, uh, uh, extract it. Do but you, I can at least show what we do. Does everybody want him to build it and push it and then like blow it away and then pull it and everything? Well, let's have the audience vote maybe. Oh, that's is that what you're talking about? Um, yeah. So actually, well, no, that. I meant like if we do... Oh, this. pull it from like latest or whatever. Yeah, except except one of the things I found mildly annoying is there is no latest in here, so you have to. Oh. Although kind of best practice wise, it, oh look at that, I'm already one behind. Um, yeah, everybody, everybody wants you to actually build this thing out correctly in the proper way. Well, so I argue that the way it is right now actually is the proper way. Um, Will you download everything first and then package it up? I yes. would agree with that. Because otherwise, you you're uh, pulling run from the, the internet of, every time. Ex well, and you don't know necessarily what you're going to get, um, because I'm not True. doing like you could a get a 404. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, wrong pace buffer again. Or you might end up running up somebody at AWS bill, and that would be bad too. <laughs> but we could do it with the latest, and we could clean up this guy. My insert mode, yeah. Um, and then, so we're going to dump this and I don't know if you noticed, but in my entry or in my uh, shell script, I'll show you in a second. Um, I cheated and just use it a, that was not the right. Oh yes, it was. Um, hold on a sec. I'm, I'm trying to do too many things at the same time. All right. And then we're going to, First, we're going to install the things we know we need. Hopefully, this minor version update. So if you notice, it went to 2.83.4 from .3. Uh, hopefully, it didn't add any uh, dependencies, but we will find out the hard way if they did. Well, um, let's see. So we can start that running, and then I will show you what uh, the other thing I did that was a little bit of a cheat. Um, I like cheats, though. Exactly. Uh, so if I try to run this in the background, it will dump far too much content. So let's do this. Uh, 162, maybe? 
Nope. <laughs> uh, let's. Do you know? <laughs> I, I don't, so I'll have to look it up. Uh, oh, it's. Oh no, I'm already on the machine. Oh. <laughs> oh well, that'll do it. That's easier. All right. So if we look in the shell script, um, if you notice, I cheated a little bit by just putting star here uh, so that I, it wouldn't matter because when it extracts, it extracts with the full, um, the full name. name and everything. Yeah. Right. So one way I've fixed that in the past is I do sim linking around so that I create like opt blender current version. And then I point that at the thing. And then in this script, I would say current version, but the Makes star sense. works. It's inside a container. I know there's not going to be multiple versions, so right. it's fine. Um, so yeah. Uh, so that's why that works. Um, okay, so now it is downloading the guy and then extracting it into opt. Um, and that is going to take a second. So while we're waiting for the internet... Out of curiosity, since Andrew was bragging about his gigabit ethernet or internet, uh -huh. what kind of internet speeds do you have there in uh, the Boston area? Uh, on offer, we have gigabit. One of the really nice things about my house uh, now in downtown Boston is we actually have three options. We have oh, Comcast, dang. Fios, and RCN. And I go with RCN because they're a little bit smaller and their customer service is good. Hmm. Um, and I don't have gigabit Ethernet. I, you know, I just, you know, or like a giganet, gigabit pipe. I have, yeah. um, I actually recently upped it to 250. Um, mm. And it's 99% of the time, it's fine. Um, and so what's I've cool, actually, even if less I run, than that now. Good well, if you. I run like a fast.com test, um, if you haven't tried fast.com, it's Netflix's like speed tester. And it's right. really nice because it doesn't require flash. Um, so, and if you hit the advanced options when it's done, you can get all the results like speed test. Right. You. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I usually actually get in excess of 250. I usually get 270 or so. Um, and then uh, the other cool thing about Fast is I discovered there's a uh, there's a command line client uh, somebody yep. wrote that's a wrapper yep. for it. It's got some bugs in it. But um, yeah. All right. So it built our new. I'm doing mine right now. And uh, you, you can see what it takes to run a live stream out of your house, folks. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if I'm running the live streams, I might want to think about that gigabit. Um, so, no, you actually don't need it. It's it's all in the upload. You need about 10 megs of upload. And if you've got that solidified, you're probably good. And right, right now I'm rocking right. 17 using the full upload right now, right? Like Because there's actually yeah, so a I have stream coming in and out of Zoom and then the stream coming in and out of OBS. So, yeah. Right, right. I have uh, 15 or 20, I think. Um, but so just to kind of confirm that it actually works. Um, Whoa, it didn't expand. I was wondering about that. Um, so inside here, it did not actually expand the tarball when I downloaded it from the internet, which is super annoying because... Wait, I, it did it when you did it from the local file system, though. Correct. Uh, probably because it's doing... So the problem is, right, tar and XZ, I don't think are installed. Oh, this is the difference between UBI and the Fedora base image. Uh, tar is not in the Fedora one. Ah, um, interesting. But okay. XZ is not there, so I bet it can't untar it even if I want it to. Let's try. It might be a XZ lib, though, so. Might be. Nope. Mm. Um, yeah, so mm. that's a pain in the butt. So that would mean I'd install XZ. Um, and then put a command in the container file to actually extract it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of annoying. this is because you're on a different machine though. No, same machine, or I mean, same, same machine in a container. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. I didn't realize it operated differently. That might be worth going to file a bug about. Um, although, although that might be intentional because yeah. They want you to actually the look at the stuff you're injecting from the internet. <laughs> <Could be> <laughs> I mean, if I'm Who a security guy, if I'm a security guy on the Docker team, I'm gonna be like, well, now wait a minute. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's say let's enforce some good practice here. <laughs> right. So yeah, that was kind of interesting. Um, but like I said before, my actual recommendation is to download whatever it is you want to install and use uh, because then, one, you don't have to download the, I think it's whatever this says, right, is um, 127 megs every time you build a container. Um, 
you know what version you're getting, all that kind of stuff. So it's usually a better idea to do it that way. Um, but interesting nonetheless. It is interesting. So how would you, I mean, it is 127 meg binary. If you were going to try and share this, how would you share this? Would you say this container is in my local registry? So go grab it from some local file system somewhere, maybe. I mean, is is that... Even how would I share the container how, or how, how would I yeah, share how the would you, build like, scripts? You build the container, you build the scripts, you've, but you still need these artifacts that you have to pull in. Right. So uh, normally you when you manage I'm, that? Right. So normally when I'm doing something like this, um, I put it in the readme. Um, that's mm. one thing I'll do. Um, if I want to, I mean... One of the things we're going to talk about in a later episode is how we can share this across our data center okay. so that we can share the actual So I'll hold off on that. Sorry. My yeah. Um, and that's kind of where OpenShift comes in because basically it gives us an, an easy uh, local registry that we can go and stick these things in, right? Right. Um, so, which is which is nice because then you want to build the thing and then you want to go do it somewhere else. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. So generally speaking that's the way i've kind of done it in the past um the other trick is you know is basically just to use a readme file this is one of those things where things like helm and chart um and then a, a thing we did a million years ago now uh, called atomic app was trying to solve for this kind of problem is like how do you get the artifacts that you need to build the thing to the user using a similar distribution mechanism as containers. So this is also kind of the idea behind operators too, right? Is that um, you need it, or OLM in particular, the operator lifecycle manager, is that what it stands mm -hmm. for? Yes. Um, is you need to be able, like the problem of distribution so of software is a constant problem. Um, and one that we solve in all the various Linuxes in all different ways, right? We have DNF versus yum versus, uh, you know, app get versus, you know, whatever. Um, and so we solve it in all different ways. So that's annoying and confusing. You know, Windows has their own now, uh, used to be NuGet. Now they're shipping their own package manager. You know, so you have all these different ways of doing it with all different formats and everything else. One of the advantages that we have with containers now is that we have barely, but mostly solidified on a, on an image format that we can distribute in a similar way. And that's what's so nice about the CNCF, right? Yes. Is that we can, we actually now have a standard. So now what I could do is I could actually make a container of these things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then distribute that as a container, which then you extract to build your container. So you, okay. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. that that's what Atomic App literally did. Uh, whatever, got to be five years more now ago. Um, yes. And that's uh, kind of like, like similar yeah. to Helm charts. <laughs> uh, it's actually also similar to um, the Ubuntu version, which kind of like is actually still going, but uh, never really took off. What's it called? Um, not Snap, but the other one. Um, Flatpak? No, that's the that's the, that's the Fedora one. Snap. Yeah. yeah. Um, or no. The, kind of. um, uh, yeah. Sorry. The package that manager called? that Ubuntu made that really they take. build apps out of it. Um, yeah. There's a uh, guy. Juju. No. It wasn't yes. Juju. Juju. Okay. Juju. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Similar concept. Juju with charms. That's what it was. Yes. Uh, Juju and charms. Um, yes. And apparently there is a. a a decent sized population still using that and and finding good success with it um so but that's similar to helm charts similar to olm um all all trying to wrap themselves around a distribution model using containers to distribute the things that you need to build containers or orchestrate them for that matter it's kind of interesting i'm a super nerd did i mention that yes yeah, I'm a you, but you're taking it to another level. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, do we have any more questions about Blender, or should we uh, move on to something else? Uh, there's no questions about Blender, but questions about where to go to grab uh, code-ready containers. Uh, so, get a login oh, okay. from developers.redhat.com, Narendev, and 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 go to try the stream dash try link I put in chat. I'll drop it again in chat since we're talking about it. And um, if you have an account, you log in, you download the thing. You're off and running, right? Like it gives you a uh, pull secret to to actually run the code ready containers and you know licensed and everything else, right? Like 
so that way you can have OpenShift locally. Um, it's not for weak machines, though. I'll give you that. Um, we're working on the performance of it, right? Like we just got OKD 4.5 out the door, and we finally are getting some people that are doing it on single node clusters. So that's going to be interesting to see what CRC does with that. Um, so yeah, that'll be some some work in progress there, but it's definitely you know usable on beefier systems, and CRC will you know give you the full OpenShift experience. Um, otherwise, if you want you know generic Kubernetes stuff, right? Like there's Kind, Minikube, all that stuff out there too. Um, so why don't we uh, take a moment for uh, you know those sweet sweet internet points? Okay. Um, yes, you want internet points for people. Yes. People want see. internet points too. What did I do with my uh, presentation mode slides? They seem to have disappeared. Um, all right, let me try this again. Um, oh yeah, as a brief interlude too, I wanted to point out my uh, gift from my uh, wife, my new oh. coffee mug. Your new coffee mug, okay. What's Everybody it? loves Hang a coffee on. mug. Oops. The Technology. future of books is feminist. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. Um, all right, nice. so sweet, sweet internet points. Um, internet points. So, am I supposed to uh, do anything with all of this? Did you send this to me? Did you share this? You, you didn't. I did not. It's secret. Yeah. I, it's it's secret. in the exact same file as last time. So. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's not like it's getting a lot of uh, play. I can uh, send you a link to it right now. No, no, no. I got it. Um, okay. No. It, it, I'm, do you want me to do anything with this as far as dropping this in chat? Or um, maybe drop the URL into chat, or uh, you really just need the code, um, and then you can go to uh, Red Hat Level Up Point Form, um, and you can type in the code. All this does is make it so that it types in the code for you. Um, I'm grabbing it for you, folks. So as part <laughs> of worry. the submission form for the points, um, there is a nice little thing where it says, what's the public name you want to use? So that's what these are. And here are our top three vote or points getters so far. Um, no one has nice. done Look any points besides going to the show. So everybody's got the same number of points. Um, that's fine. So, uh, we're, so, yeah. We just got started. Exactly. You know, no exactly. Deal. Um, so you will get um, 100 points for coming to this show if you go and type in that form code. Uh, you also get 100 points for going to any show. So that's why uh, these three people have gotten 200 points each. Uh, and soon, hopefully, they will have 300 points is my, my hope. Yes. I have just dropped the link into the Restream chat, which is sending it everywhere. Is that how you wanted me to do that? I yes, we, talked about uh, this. we need okay. to remove it from Discord at the end. But other than that, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that way, oh, cool. if somebody wants to come along and see it later and get the points, they certainly can. But you have to watch it in the video stream. Is basically the deal. Yeah. So simple enough. That's kind of the way we're playing the game right now, folks. So yeah. exactly, sweet, sweet internet. If you have points. questions, let us know. Sweet, sweet internet points. Not sure what the internet points are going to get you just yet. But we're getting there. It, it's just like slash dot karma. It gets you the same thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I knocked karma. over web server and points um, from the slash dot effect. All right. So let's move on. It's been a long time um, since I got slash dotted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so another. Brenda asked, does he need to go to the forum today and do it? No. No, you no. do not. Okay, if you've uh, do it before the next watched... show if you want to be on the list, but uh, you can do it, you know, for you ever. do it once and you're good, right? Yeah, okay. right. But there's no there's no time requirement on on filling in the form. Right, right, right. right. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I calculate them every week. Actually, if you look in that same GitHub repo, you can see my awesome uh, script to do the uh, um, the points calculation see under level up tools um, <clears throat> that should have been one of my uh, script examples that would have been funny maybe we could do that that should time. have been did you do yeah. that as a shell script oh wow. uh, i think i did a python script oh well you could but, totally put that in container look at that i think i even put comments and stuff in it look at that wow good very proud you. of myself man um level yeah i mean this, actually 
one kind of an aside, right, is like one thing to be said for open source, right, is like I would never have done this without comments because it will be in public and my name will be forever associated with it. So if it's completely that's why I was so concerned about putting up the prep machine shell script, because I know it's mm -hmm. kind of um, and I'm embarrassed to put it on the Internet. So as a result, what's so nice about open source is you're guaranteed to up level whatever the quality of your content is. Uh, so that's that, very true. Yeah. So that you don't get embarrassed by it. Um, so I did yeah, clean like, up the prep machine thing a bit. It's still janky, but it's not as bad. Yeah, so I I did uh what did I do? Rackets is what I called it. It was a uh, Raspberry Pi with Kubernetes stood up by Ansible. So Raspberry Ansible Kate. Um Rackets is what I called it. And when I put it on, like I just put a bunch of playbooks together and you know, just put it on the internet. And I was like, all right, everybody, here you go. You can stand up a Raspberry Pi cluster just like this, and it's this simple, right. you know, right? But I know that this isn't perfect Ansible, you know, scripting. I know this isn't perfect uh, cubeadmin, you know, installs, and, like, the code immediately got better. And mm -hmm. uh, for to my knowledge, it still works on Raspberry Pi 4s and 3s and 2s, and, you know, and you can stand up your own cluster of multiple machines if you want. Uh, with some good assumptions now and some good docs now, thanks to putting it on the internet. So yeah, right. don't be afraid to put your code on the internet, right? Like, don't be afraid to learn in public. You know, that's probably the best advice I've ever gotten. I, I would agree. Um, you know, the thing is that, you know, like, like honor that, you know, desire to make things understandable by other people is when you're putting it on the internet, right? I mean, so there's there's nothing wrong with putting something out there that is not perfect, but putting something out right. there that isn't thought through, you know, like that's that's kind of really what I'm getting at is like, mm -hmm. you know, when, you know, is is take a little, you know, take a little cleanup time, um, you know, put in the comments, you know, do the things that you were taught to do when you first learned to right. build things. Right. Um, so, yeah, and the comment should include uh, context and intent at first, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, right? Like if you're doing it for my example, when I said, you know, I commented the hell out of every playbook and I was just like, this is what I'm trying to do here. You know, right, like, right, right. <laughs> if, yeah. if there's a better way to do it, like it's like an inv open invitation. If there's a better way to do this, please go ahead. Feel free to, you know, edit. This. Yeah. Well, and or or especially I think it's particularly important to comment on something when you see when it's like you're doing something weird, but you're doing something weird on purpose. Um, right. And, you Intentional know, it's like weirdness. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or definitely outside to normal use case type stuff. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, you were dealing with bug X, Y, Z in some package. And so you had to do this this way. Um, it's actually funny. I took a certification test many years ago uh, and I took and I I was doing a practice test. That's what it was. And I ended up getting a bunch of questions wrong because the answers were looking for what the correct answer was. Right. But, but from actual experience, I knew there were bugs with some of those correct answers. And so they didn't actually work as advertised. And so I got Ooh. it wrong because I said, oh, well, you should really do it this way because this way will actually work. And that way doesn't work because of bugs X, Y, and Z, right? Um, nice. But it didn't even cross my mind that what they were really looking for was the right answer, not the one that was yes. So the Air Force, they used to tell us uh, it, for promotion testing, it's not about uh, having the right answer is about having the most correct answer right uh, and i think yes. that kind of like that mentality is not always the best mentality to take right like you don't have the most correct answer every time for every software solution right right on a test right. though that is a completely different scenario right like if you're looking for the most correct answer to something on the internet you'll never find it because there's always someone there to argue with you <laughs> right. so <laughs> you, you have to keep it in context here when it comes to your code right like your code is your code you wrote it you know that you know your level of experience is x if you're doing something weird you should say hey i'm doing this because of y and z you know right. and that should be your comments i completely agree awesome so now what? Do you want to? You got another script up for grabs, or well, I you do. Only got ten minutes left. Wow, thanks. I know. I, mean, I know. We can go a little over if you want. Oh no, we got Paul's thing at the top of the hour. Sorry. Oh right, right. So yeah, so no, we only got ten minutes left. Wow, this, this is just by. another one. Wow. <laughs> Let's 
kind of just talk about this one quickly and not really demo it too much because it's not that interesting. Cool. Um, but basically, this is just another shell script. Uh, all it does is it. Uh, let me let me show you the script first because it'll make more sense. Um, yes. Thank you. All it does is takes um, what page number you want, what page number you want to end at, and then a PDF file, and it will pull that part out of the oh. PDF. So. This was to do okay. my expenses. Um, so for our expenses, I had to push oh, uh, like our our phone bill up, but I didn't really want to pass on to the company all of my like phone your call calls. records. Yeah, right. I so see. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, I would pull out the bill part of it, and I finally wrote a script to do it, so I wouldn't have to do it by hand every time. So um, I'm going to use the script now because I don't file my expense report for cell phone stuff because i don't want to upload my call list <laughs> See? See? Um, <laughs> and i know i could like totally like grab the pdf and edit it and then put it back up there but i it's it's like i want to be able to do this more like not kludgy by handy right right like, right yeah so yeah so i did this go script uh script uh to do it Obviously, GoScript is not regularly installed in a lot mm -hmm. of places. The thing I really wanted to point out here, though, is, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to point it out. Um, maybe we just do this. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Uh, not that. Nope. I cannot type. All right. So I am currently, let me see if I can do this. Yes. Okay. So this is fedora 32 okay so let me see sorry i'm trying to i'm, I'm doing topology in my head here um no nope, let's do okay so it should be on yeah uh nope And this will all make much more sense in a second. Um, uh, and say, OK, and if we go to PDF extract, OK, so this is also Fedora 32, um, where you can use UBI. So let's do this. Um, Podman build minus T PDF extract uh, dot. Um, and someone's asking why go script over QPDF. Wow. Scott Worthington, oh. as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, no reason. Um, okay. that's, that's what I knew. OK, this didn't do what I thought it was going to do. It must be the other one. Oh, it's LM sensors. OK, so we were going to talk about LM sensors anyway. Um, OK, so pretend like I didn't go down that path for now. Uh, the point is just that you know you build a container file. Um, it's building as a UBI on top of, in this case, Fedora. It will run um, you know, rel bits inside the container on Fedora. So that's cool. So that's great. It's pretty straightforward. You pass it a PDF. Um, and you can extract parts of it. But I'm not really gonna demo that because it's uh, it's not that interesting. We're almost out of time. So <laughs> what I did wanna do was look at this guy. Okay, so this, I don't know if I can actually make this work because I don't know how to make the, uh, the permissions correct in Podman to get access to the physical sensors on the host machine. I think it's doable and that's why I wanted to do it on the show. So let's play with that. But before I do that, I wanted to show you something interesting that happens if you are on, say, Fedora, uh, which is going to be um, this. Uh, just T, um, what did I call this, monitor. OK, so a uh, little bit of background on this. Um, uh, the Lenovo machines, um, a bunch of them running Linux, um, had a problem where the hardware was like misreporting due to a bug, the CPU temperature throttle uh, rules. Oh, and so, so as a result, like <coughs> it would throttle frequency. CPU. Your yeah, right. Like even when it wasn't down when it wasn't right, hot. Right. Yeah, exactly. That would be awful. It's super annoying. So it, it took me a while to figure out what was going on, um, mm -hmm. and 
one of the things I was looking at was basically why, you know, it's throttling all the time. So I started to try to monitor the throttling, right? So using LM sensors and this little script, I think the script is partially jigged from somewhere on the internet that I, you know, modified and, and touched up or whatever. Um, but this is what I wanted to point out is if I try to yum install LM sensors from uh, UBI 8 on you need to uh, privilege. Fedora, it doesn't work because it's not there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. However, if I go back to my MetRel machine, which is registered with Red Hat, right. um, I actually get in the UBI, I actually get all rel uh, components which oh. is a little surprising. So um, wait a minute. If you're on a registered rel box, UBI has more stuff available? Correct. Interesting. Maybe yes. this is what the complaint is. Maybe. Um, yeah. But it's, uh, it is documented and all that jazz. Um, it just didn't kind of occur to me at first. What's... Huh. <laughs> yeah. And so it actually installs. I already had a cache, so you didn't actually see right. it. At all. Yeah. I could wipe it and we could see it. But actually, let's do that because it will. Um, it's interesting. You, you have um, two minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. How can I quickly get rid of this? Podman, RMI. RMI, Splatter. Yeah, you know the name. You're good. Maybe. Hey, look at that. It worked. Nope. It didn't clear the cache, though. Uh, tsh, tsh, tsh. Let's get this guy. Oh, I think that's a flag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cannot be forced. Because it has dependence. Um, where is... Okay, let's see. Podman... Yeah, I think there's a flag too. I just can't remember what it is. Um, so can we say um there's a way to just yeah. Oops. Oh, I'm on my no cash. Dash dash no cash. Oh, is that what it is? Someone put that. Oh, oh yeah, right. I could just build it with no cash. Duh. Sorry. Yeah. I should have thought of that. Um so if you notice uh here mm -hmm. it's now saying red hat linux 8 versus over here where it says real UBI. basic interesting huh. and it it just swaps if you're using a subscribed host wow. um That's and wild. interestingly there's a there's an article by a guy named uh patrick uh very hard last name um, okay. who got subscription manager registered on a Fedora machine um, because it, like you still have the account, right? You don't necessarily mm -hmm. need to be running it on rel. And right. he managed to get builds using the Red Hat subscription, but building from Fedora. So it basically, it's a way of subscription manager working to basically give you access to the content that you have through your subscription. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool, especially that it's transparent. Um, but the flip side of something being transparent is, while it's nice, it has the downside of, hey, you better uh, remember this if you're trying to pass this on to somebody else or you're trying to build it somewhere else. Um, because it, it does happen uh, automatically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's what I wanted to point out. Um, cool. Maybe in a future show, we'll try to get LM sensors to actually work. Um, I fooled around it with it a bit. There should be a way to get basically the the hardware data pushed through into the container using some uh, like kernel, uh, whatever you call it. Um, I just blanked on the term, but the capabilities um, passing through the, the capabilities uh, into the container. I just couldn't find the right one uh when i was uh fooling around with this um yes uh is that washari i don't know um yeah, but yes very, yeah. very hard uh, very hard last name yes uh that's his uh <laughs> that is his official title um he's uh he's actually a big fedora contributor um 
So we need to find the doc for monsters. A uh, for the difference between UBI and REL. Uh, like that would be very helpful, I think. Oh yeah, where it's docked. Um, yeah, I yeah, found yeah, yeah. it. Uh, if if we could get that out to folks, or just put it in your show notes or something, that I think that'd be great. Yeah, I um, but we got definitely can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely found it. Um, and you know, it was very clear. It was just knowing to go look for it because um, mm-hmm. I knew, like in the back of my mind, I I thought there was a way to do it, and I couldn't remember, so I went and looked it up. Um, but yeah, I'll put it in the. Uh, you know, I'll put it in the repo, show notes, et cetera. Um, yeah. Awesome. Great. And you'll be here next week, right? And we'll be talking be about all the things. Week. Exactly. Yeah, we, and hopefully we won't have a meeting at the top of the hour and we can maybe go a little over. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe. Maybe. Nah, maybe. Um, we'll see. All right. All right. Any last second questions, comments, or whatever uh, that we want to? No, we'll get the... Uh... Uh, we'll get the we'll get the document stuff. That was really it. We'll find the the Patrick Ray hard last name thing. <laughs> um, and yeah, other than that, we'll be good. Yeah. Oh, we'll, um... no, we'll lead found it. Patrick Ray hard last names thing is already there. Rail containers on non rail hosts. Wow, really? There it is. Like See, a genius. It's a, very hard last name. <laughs> it's a very hard last name indeed. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alid, very much. You are awesome. Yes, uh, much, I couldn't say definitely. that last name. Sorry. So yeah, um, I think I think it's Uterwick or okay. Uter, Uterwick. Fair enough. Uterwick. I think that's all it. right, folks. Uh, we all right. will be back here. Uh, OpenShift Commons will be here at noon. Uh, the Level Up Hour will be here same bat time, same bat channel next week. I'm sure I just violated some trademark. Uh, <laughs> and for now, enjoy yourself. Stay safe out there. And if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. Uh, File an issue on Twitter. On the level. F- file an issue on the level up program if you need something um yeah and we will uh, see you next time folks mm-hmm.